Hi, I'm Chris Barker. And I'm Will Betts, and this is the Music Tech My Forever Studio podcast, brought to you in partnership with Audient. And we're coming to you this time from TYX in Talyard Studios, London. In this podcast, we speak with producers, DJs, engineers, and musicians about their Fantasy Forever Studio. The Fantasy Studio that our guests come up with today is one they will have to live with forever. But in Studio Foreverdom, we do have some rules, don't we, Chris? Yes, the rules. So, our guests will get for free a DAW, an audio interface, and a computer. Then they get just six other bits of studio kit plus one luxury item. We do have one more rule, though, don't we? Yes. No bundles! That's right. Choosing something sold as a package of software or hardware as a single item is not allowed. This time we're joined by a producer, songwriter and mixer who's worked with Imogen Heap and Guy Sigsworth of Fru Fru, Patrick Wolf, and Jadu Hart. Yes, and he's a fantastic guitarist too, so it'll be interesting to see how his studio stacks up with our intentionally irritating rules. Indeed it will. This is My Forever Studio with Brendan Cox. Welcome. Welcome. Morning. How are you doing tonight? Very well. Yeah? Very well, thank you. Well... You heard the rules. I heard the rules. (laughs) I think I'm across it. (laughs) Um, And I mean, first, before we we sort of dive into the the Forever Studio bit of our podcast and and picking gear, let's let's talk about like these multiple roles that you have and like, you know, what did you, was you, I guess you were a musician first, guitarist first when you were a kid growing up, that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a pretty well-worn path. If you talk to anyone doing the same thing, everyone's kind of wearing all those hats. um, Mm. And most people seem to most people I know seem to have come from music and the same as me. I um, started playing the guitar when I was really young, like nine or something like that. I heard rock music on the radio and I was just like that. And um, like my mom's a music teacher. My dad had a big record collection. It was very like present. Um, and then, yeah, sort of learnt guitar through to high school when I met other people who'd done the same thing. And I was like, oh, we could form a band and so on and so forth. And I did that until I was sort of left high school and, never really considered that it was a sort of career option and then by just sort of like intrigue dipped my toe in the water tried this sort of production thing at a a, a sort of uni level and I kind of really liked it and uh yeah so so what were the first steps into production like you know was it just you wanted to record your guitar basically and um not even really that I mean I it was almost um resentfully that I (laughs) that I went into doing it because I really saw myself as a musician and yeah. the technical thing didn't really appeal to me that much. I mean, I'd always quite like been a bit sort of nerdy about like the sounds of the guitars and the drums. And mm-hmm. you know, I grew up listening to like lots of rock and metal, and you know, poured over that sort of thing. But um, which bands though? You got to, you got to. Uh, I mean, everything. I'm a you know, child of the 2000s, so it's it's the classic list. It's your Slipknots, it's your Metallicas, it's your Dream Theaters, it's mm-hmm. you know, um, and all the shades in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I always sort of liked that aspect of things and, you know, spent time sort of tinkering with how I could make my guitar sound in my bedroom, but didn't really think too much about the actual production because I kind of saw it as a technical role. Um, and then when I started doing it at uni and I realized that it was actually a musical role and, um, you know, that it wasn't just this sort of separated thing, um, I don't know, that started to really sort of resonate with me. And um, it wasn't really about like trying to record my own music or or have like just a vehicle through which to do that. It was just, I found it interesting that you could um, take other people's music and sort of put ideas into it and marry the creative and the technical and um, so you immediately started to... working with other people. Pretty well, it was, much. It's, it's just like you start recording local bands and your mm-hmm. mates band and you do a shit job and, you know, but you sort of, you're all at the same level and you're sort of yeah. uh, learning together. And um, then you. And what were the first b- bits of gear then for like record? You know, what were the, were there any significant bits that sort of. Um, I think the first bit of recording equipment that I had was an Mbox Mini, like a Mbox 2 mm-hmm. Mini. I, I guess that was the first thing I had that like actually enabled to me to record and a, probably a cracked copy of reason, which at that point didn't actually use any audio. It was just like MIDI programming. Yeah. yeah. Remember that one. Um, but yeah, no, I was uh, very fortunate um, that in my, I think it was my second year of uni, there was a local studio um, that was, I mean, I, I'm from Brisbane in Australia, so there's not, there's no equivalent to a, a rack or an Abbey road there. So it's, mm-hmm. it's all on a much smaller scale, but, you know, a studio that did a lot of demo bands and that sort of thing um, uh, gave me a job as a sort of like casual freelance engineer and I got little bits of work. It wasn't like a full-time 
job, but it allowed me to basically do a lot of low stakes recording where I could learn and make mistakes. So I had some exposure to some gear and some real equipment. It wasn't like a huge sort of like playground of gear, but there were some real bits in there and mm -hmm. learned to use it in that way. Um, you know, by doing it wrong a lot and uh, bet on things that didn't really matter if you did it wrong. So yeah, I think that was like kind of the first experience with using recording gear um, that wasn't just like guitar equipment. Mm. Um, and then what was that transition like from sort of learning to going, oh, this is, this is my job now because it's kind of, it can be a strange path. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the transition is it's a slow thing it's you know that that gradient is is very long it's not like there's a line in the sand one day i guess for me the line in the sand is when i pulled up stumps in australia and um oh that's a weird like cricket reference but probably, <laughs> yeah. probably doesn't carry with like all the uh, listenership here it's fine Absolutely um fine big cricket audience yeah, this. yeah yeah. Weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um no but when i decided to leave australia and quit the full-time job i had a job as like the studio tech mm. um at, it was actually at the uni that i went to and right then do you want to shout it out? Uh, the Queensland Conservatorium of Music. Mm, very uh, nice. Yeah. Very, uh, to all the right right <laughs> listeners back home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I ended up sort of being the studio tech there um, because, again, like there isn't this big ecosystem of an industry back there. So like that was kind of the, what you sort of aim for was to be able to do some sort of recording gigs on the side and do some gigs with your band and then have a vaguely musical or vaguely technical job. And that was kind of cool. But I think when I decided that I really wanted to sort of see if there was a real shot at having a, an actual career where it wasn't just a kind of thing on the side um so when i quit that job and moved here i guess that was so did you move here without a job or did you yeah move? yeah yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, very foolishly <laughs> um and then that even then you know it took a few years to get going i mean like i, I make no bones about it like it's still like not like i you know can be like yes i'm gonna be great all the time it's a hustle and it's you know um i'm still like early in my career in in a lot of ways um so yeah but that was i think it was just a decision to to do that, you know, save a bit of money, move over, you move to London, you realize that that money goes about like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just sort of like trying very hard to sort of keep the ship afloat with whatever. And, you know, for a long time, it was like, it's, you know, you put in together out of little bits here and there and you, you know, recording an audio book or you, you know, wiring up someone's studio or, mm -hmm. or whatever it is to just kind of like, yeah. And then eventually it's sort of gotten to a place where that stuff gets less and less and you're busy doing the stuff that you wanted to do and yeah I, yeah it's 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 a difficult question to answer because it's not like there's this thing where you go and that's the day it happened but the you know? but what i was interested in is that risky maneuver and your risky maneuver because at some point everybody has to go right i'm saying and that was moving here essentially i think so yeah, yeah. that's yeah that's i guess the, the closest thing to a like that's where it sort of started i kind of consider that to be this beginning of my career even though i was sort of doing it in some capacity before then but it's that it's that point where it's like this is make or break as such it's like i'm you know there's no way of watering this down now i'm going here to do this yeah um well on that point locations it mm. sort of brings us to the first it question does. is in your fantasy forever studio land where in the world would you have your dream studio if you could pick anywhere in the world and tell us about that location and and you know why i'm not sure if i have like a specific well like, well you, you, this is like literally the point of the podcast that's right like... <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think maybe i have a general category i mean yeah <laughs> Fair news. Uh, I told you I was unprepared. <laughs> um, I love the idea. I mean, I love being in London and the sort of just the hub of activity that it is and the, you know, the relevance that it has and, and all that. So in a lot of ways, it seems foolish not to say that or, you know, or in LA or that kind of thing. But then, you know, if we're talking just like fantasy dream yep. things, probably somewhere that's got a little bit more space to you yeah. know, spread out. Um, you know, I'm from Australia and that, and I don't think it would be there necessarily, but having the beach close by, okay. having a bit more of, you know, you know, just sort of room to stretch your arms. Um, that would probably be it. Um, when, when I was back there last time I went and visited my brother in Sydney and, um, we weren't here, like he works in the city and we got up one morning and we were like down on the beach, which is like walking distance from his house at like 7.30 in the morning and had had a cafe breakfast before he went and worked his normal job. And I was like, this is outrageous, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so yeah. somewhere where that kind of option's available that isn't completely like disconnected from, you know, society. Uh, but then also the idea of like having, you know, some small town on the coast of like Spain or Portugal or something and being, you know, okay. that's, I, th I think somewhere where there's a beach, uh, and 
you know, the weather is good. So you think in Europe, though, rather than Australia? I think so. I think I'd just have too much little, like, Europe and London FOMO if I went back to Australia at this point. Um, sorry. Well, let's try, let's try and narrow it down to city, like somewhere you've been or what about any other? Have you been to any studios actually like that, that you would kind of, you know, if you've worked out of anybody else's studio? I mean, what's the one we always have Rick Rubin's place always comes up oh, on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. There's, well, it's not near a beach, but uh, Vislord Studios in, um, it's just outside Amsterdam, uh, which is a lovely big studio and it's sort of in the woods and that's really cool because like, you just sort of come out and it's, you just, I don't know, there's something about being that environment that, feels it kind of relaxes you a little bit more mm. you know, like studios in the city can be a slightly like sort of stressful kind of thing let's just say lisbon because uh, yeah lisbon. lisbon because it doesn't matter somewhere <laughs> yeah where we can go to where we can go down to the beach but it's got you could i mean all these things are possible in the forever studio so you can be in the like. in the woods but also near the beach in the, and near the city yeah so we can send out a crew to plant a forest yeah near yeah. to where you're going to be yeah. by the by the sea yeah, yeah. that's that seems okay. fair. i should have just said london <laughs> <laughs> really back myself into a corner there what about your current studio then because you're you're here in charlie right i now. i am at tired yeah my current studio is actually very fresh i just in the last week have moved from tally within tally um so my current studio is quite a mess at the moment um and the floor is covered in bits of solder from a late night session uh, with me and some D-subs. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I have just moved uh, literally around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like a lot of the studios here, they're uh, sort of small one room production studios that sort of have enough room to set up with, you know, with you and a sort of small group of artists or, you know, one artist and have some keyboards and things. Um, I've now got a little live room which is shared with my studio neighbor, but um, that's sort of been the upgrade from the studio that I was in. Mm. Um, so I've now got... And you mix in there as well? There's a mix room? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a bit better for that. Like the, I, I really liked my old room. It had a real sort of like nice, uh, sort of airy sort of quality to it. Um, but this is a bit more conventionally studio shaped and yeah, it's, it's better for mixing. Like it sounds considerably better and just workflow wise, it's better. Okay, well now we've got the, the location locked in. Yeah, what about the kind vibe? Of, yeah. Um, well, I mean, we, we can we can come back and tweak yeah. it, but like, yeah, what's the I might vibe just need in to, like, the look at a map of Europe and then we can <laughs> cut that <laughs> off stick a pin in it? <laughs> yeah, uh, the vibe. Um, this is one thing where I'm probably uh, maybe a little bit fussy on. Um, I really liked the idea that of setting up a space that had a bit of attention to detail in how it felt and how it looked. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you're going to be here forever, so this is important. Well, yeah. 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 Um, and that was, um, you know, to blow my own trumpet, that was kind of like a thing that people said a lot when they come into the room was like, oh, this feels really nice kind of thing. I mm. sort of trying to make it a little less studio-y and a little more living room-y mm. than, you know, your average studio. And like some, for some people, it, that's not a concern and that's fine, you know, um, but I just kind of, I don't know, I like the idea that the space feels a bit more like somewhere you'd want to hang out regardless of whether you're there to work yeah yeah um so i spent a lot of time and energy in sort of the aesthetic side of it in the last room and i'm doing the same in the current room um i'm very very fortunate that my partner's a very good interior designer uh -huh. uh, and <laughs> so go. i can <laughs> uh get told when things are just stupid ideas or when they're not going to look good yeah. and so yeah um but yeah uh the vibe is just trying to have it a little bit more just casual living roomy as li i mean obviously a studio's got lots of things that give it away as a studio keyboards mm -hmm. and whatnot except trying for this one that's only it's only gonna have six things so. six. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well yeah. yeah there's that you know you know try and hide the cables as much put some nice furniture in like you know yeah. i've got some equipment racks that like i i built them when it was locked down so i had the time on my hands you know mm -hmm. so they don't quite look like the average studio furniture thing they've just kind of got more of a sort of timber kind of thing it's just uh, like plants that's uh, that's one i really like lighting that sort of thing. Have you got natural light in the current studio? Uh, so I've got a skylight. Okay. Uh, I had two windows in the last one, and it's it is definitely not as it definitely like lose the day a bit more in the new one. But even just having that little bit of skylight, and also if the curtains are open. So in the forever studio, light would be an important thing. Massively, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's a you know, a lot of people when they walk into a studio with windows are like, oh god, the windows are so nice, and it's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. Let's um let's lock all that loungy vibe in, well, mm -hmm. and uh, let's let's move on to the, the three relatively boring free items which is your audio interface what daw you're going to pick and computer mac or pc i guess sure so let's run through those what do you want to go audio interface yeah 
I mean, th there will be a recurrent theme here in my selections, which is that like, I just kind of want to make the job easier and not think about, you know, things that things like that, right? So uh, the answer for both the interface and the computer is going to be similar. So at the moment, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo, like the rack thing. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Like, you know, the drivers are really stable. I don't like using the console software. I don't like going between the DAW and that. It's just like, like I think that bit of software could be improved quite a lot. But even if it was what I wanted it to be, even just flipping between the two, is kind of a pain for me because mm. yeah, I, I, I don't know, just not how my brain works. So it's fine. It sounds great. I mean, I, I am not fussy about how interfaces sound to me. They all sound the same. I know that some people might cringe at that. I don't think there's a meaningful difference realistically. So it's um, more workflow. Really. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want some, like in, in my last studio, I had the interface like under the table uh, and in this one, I've got it in the rack next to me, but like, I just want it out of the way. I don't want to think about it. I mm. just, it's just like a means to an end, right? Yeah. The IO count, I guess, would be important. If I've only got six things in the studio, I probably don't need a lot of IO. But if I was going to move on from the Universal Audio, maybe something like the Antelope, uh, you know, Orion or the Galaxy or whatever mm -hmm. it is, just like as long as the drivers are solid, as long as, I mean, as long as I'm not dicking around with like, you know, layers of software mixes and things like that, I just kind of mm -hmm. want to set it up once and just never think about it again yeah. and just know that... Um, so what do you want to lock in? Do you want to lock in the UA or on the? On the I'm gonna Orion? I'm gonna lock in the Antelope only because I you can put more I/O in a single rack unit interface, and I'm not gonna really use the console. So that's the Orion, is it, or the Galaxy? What's the what's the we got one the you want the best the one, right? one, right? The most Imagine. expensive, fanciest one, right? Let's just see what that is. Um, I'm gonna walk back on that. I'm gonna say the UA16 only because I'm gonna need the UAD chips, and I'm probably not gonna waste one of my six on that. And, and what about your? I mean, don't forget, UA. You don't get the plugins. Yeah. Yeah, but it comes with them. It comes. With you get the ones with the. Yeah, yeah. You get you get those, but you don't get. Yeah. No extras. No bundles. Well, no bundles. Know, I'm being well, in, even in that case. Uh, that's kind of making me a bit more. And economic. what about pre? Is there pre's on that one? No, I get the 16 one with no pre's in it. Um, okay. And yeah, then because in my in my six thing studio, I'm not going to need more than 16 I/O, am I? So. Okay. Okay. So no uh, microphones for no, engineering. No, no, Interesting. No pre's. Okay. 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 On the interface. Okay. We'll no, not on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fine. And a computer and. I don't want to recording anything in my studio. I just okay. want to sit in it. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful with no yeah. audio equipment whatsoever. Yeah. Just picture. <laughs> um, what about the the computer? I mean, does that make a difference to you? Is it a similar thing? Just, no, it's it's, yeah. it's Mac. I mean, I'm tied to that ecosystem. Um, and just whatever is the. Is that because are you lo logic them for your door? Or? No, no, Pro Tools. No. So your Pro Tools, yeah. okay. Um, but I, again, I want it out of the way in a different room if, yeah. if possible, and I just want it to work. Yeah. Um, so as overspec as it can be to reduce the chance that I'm ever going to get an error message or. Well, we at, what we at now with specs? Well, every yeah. every series there's a there's a there's a more ridiculously priced Mac that's the fantasy Mac. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like I'm actually looking at it now because I've got I've still on the i9 thing when it's really like reaching its limit for me um but i'm sort of trying to look at whether the m2 or the m1 is better or do i wait for the next m2 there's always that thing with apple it's like do you wait for the next thing but we're uh, going for we're going for a desktop like yeah yeah yeah. and pro mac thinking? pro uh yeah, well yeah, no yeah. at the moment i'd be going for one of the silicon things which would be probably the mac studio uh, oh, okay M oh, god they've got too many fucking names with them yeah oh, i think it's ultra is like the top tier one i okay. think the best available silicon mac you can get at the moment is the mac Studio M1 Ultra, which is too many things to have to think about to say. And why is that? Because that because of Pro Tools. Well, no, it's just the most spec'd out thing. I think it's the highest spec. Oh, is it on the, on the yeah? Uh, and with surprisingly the affordable as well. I mean, like I mean, it starts. This is more to spec'd that. out than the fifty grand thing that we usually have on. Um, the difference. It's a really good point. This um, is this is interesting computer chat for a change. Usually, I try and race through these ones. You, you do. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, if, if you absolutely juice up one of the Tower Mac Pros, you probably have a more powerful computer. But, I mean, I don't do tons of video work and all that. Yeah, so. these are, and it's also the Intel um, chips rather than yes, the, exactly. the M1. Ah, okay. So, so I, th difference. I think yeah. I think if you completely, like, just no holds barred spec out the yep. studio, I think you come in under 10 grand. Yeah. Uh, I think they start about four, and so... Yeah. So we'll go for that. Oh. Whatever that is. We're yeah. doing eight eight terabyte SSD, 125 gigs of RAM. 
all that business faster yeah. 64 core gpu 20 core yeah like CPU surplus business. to requirement you know yeah. obviously as or, plugins keep developing then you know you end up yeah. reaching that yeah. ceiling but just as, as far in front of myself as i can get with that so that mm. i don't have pro tools throwing cpu errors and you never have to think about changing it in the history of forever because that's yeah how well yeah i'm in some sort of like purgatory here where i'm yeah. Like yeah. updating my software or anything like that but so. happy <laughs> with a happy beach purgatory yeah yeah yeah, yeah. purgatory with a beach um, so we've gone for a an eight thousand um, pound M1 Ultra. Good, Mac yep. Studio. Lock it Great. in. Right. Okay, now we get onto the favourite bits. So that's what you've got for free, and now you get six other items for your studio. So that's mm -hmm. all you've got so far in there. We buy the beach. We've got those three bits of kit. Uh, well, the computer, the DAW, and the interface. Now we start with your six items. So item number one, what's it going to be? Um, I think it would, it's just sort of in keeping with the uh, idea of trying to make things easy and not have to think about too much, just some sort of like small format console. Um, mm. Not because I want to mix analog. A spirit cause... folio pad. <laughs> Maybe something. I'm... <laughs> Possibly. What, what, how do you feel about the spirit folio pad? Is that what you're thinking actually had in mind, right? I don't actually know what that is. It's like a little, um, it's like the little sound craft is about that big. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was about... Lots of coloured knobs on it. I don't think yeah. it had faders. didn't have faders. A lot, lot, of, lot of people in, really enjoyed that. Yeah. It was a nice little thing, but you're thinking something I think mm -hmm. a little bit more upscale, potentially. API, well, API 16 away, I'm probably supposed oh. to say audience here, aren't I? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, you know, or the new audience, like, because the audience stuff's inline, actually. So, you know, possibly, probably an inline thing. Um, Heritage edition? Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I like the 1608 because it's got... Um, like the 500 slots in it and you can buy it with them filled without that being a bundle so okay buy that Ooh, that's, that's a sneak that's, that's a real, real sneak sneaker. you've done there that's yeah. quite yeah. good yeah okay. good though. um but it's it's you know if the idea of a console isn't because i need to have the big flashy thing mm. uh it's just because then everything's just coming in it's right there in front of you you're not you know having to think and choose the preamps sound good you know it's just well and you've hacked the system with the 500 modules as well so that's yeah it's it's really a workflow thing right it's mm. just um because uh, one thing that i really like to have and i how i try to set up my current studio even in the sort of much smaller factor small smaller form factor is just like everything ready to go you know yeah. i have the synths on their own input channels i have the vocal mic plugged in i have the guitar thing plugged in it's so like you can kind of pick up anything and go mm. and i think that's really helpful for especially working with other people who aren't going to be the ones patching the stuff themselves if they can just like oh what if we put down that and everything's just kind of ready to go so i think the console is the ultimate way to just sort of like streamline that and philosophy. inline stuff makes sense to other people as well like yeah. like you, you, from console to console the, yeah mm. the 1608 isn't inline i'm quite no. sure but uh you know maybe i'd just sacrifice that so i can get the eqs, EQs. yeah uh, <laughs> they sound so good on drums that those eqs yeah. like yeah killer the other thing there and why that's the sort of like uh economic answer is that the monitoring section and that's one thing that i find quite important is to have uh like good monitoring control at your fingertips you know i'm mm. sort of in my current room i've got an spl monitor controller and i use it to like flip between reference mixes and uh cue mixes and all that kind of stuff and just being able to do that quite quickly at the touch of a button i find quite important for my process of doing things so oh yeah. and are we getting the flying faders on the 1608 with the pro tools um, it's got like a kind of pro tools integration thing hasn't it with the flying faders i probably wouldn't use it but i guess we are because why not <laughs> there it is yeah, we've upsold the dream upsold the dream yes love it okay so we've got that locked in the 1608 flying faders all of those 500 series things filled so item number two i would probably bring from my current collection uh my soyuz 017 tube microphone which is something i bought last year which has been a very uh, nice little crown jewel for my studio. Um, there's a million great mics, but um, yeah, how how say how would you narrow it down? There's so because you get into a discussion with somebody about like mics and vocal mm -hmm. mics and all that kind of stuff. It can go on forever. Like this. Yeah, and like any engineer sort of knows that one mic isn't always the best tool for every app given application, but it's a pretty good line of best fit. Um, mm. Everyone who has come in and recorded in that mic has made comment on how good it sounds or how, how much they like how they sound through it the first time i heard it i was like okay yeah this is this is a really you know special bit of git i know how it sounds so um yeah um 
I'd be hard pressed to sort of go past it. I mean, again, like there's obviously loads of great mics that you could pick to be, mm. but if you know you're picking one, you kind of want a flagship is going to do a great job of a lot of things, particularly vocals. Um, but and yeah, that's going into the pre's on the 1608, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a tube mic, is it? Yes, is it the the 017. Yeah, is it? yeah. They make a solid state version as well. Um, right. What was your one? Um, I'm just yeah. glad to know that that's uh, that's a heavy price. It's a heavy price. Well, it's four grand. This it's a nice mic. It's a 34 millimeter. Four one one one, in fact, which is uh, very specific. Very specific. I, yeah. I remember it was four one one ten. Like just <laughs> a little inflation. Bit, yeah, just an extra quid. I now. actually thought they went up a bit more than that. The last time I saw them in Funky Junk, they were closer to five. Which is oh, nice. were they? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I managed to uh, get in before that price rise. Yeah, uh, but yeah, um, it just. This is great. It's just like it eats. So had you, had you used one before? Like, how did you come in? Uh, yeah, I. Everybody I, has a story about when they discovered that, and like, yeah. this is the one. <laughs> um, I had borrowed one because I'd heard a lot about it. You mm. know, just in sort of keeping abreast of things, and um, you know, if you're going vintage, you're talking twice, three times the price at that point, which was not an option. And so, like, looking around at what's that like attainable but high end kind of thing, that was one that recurringly came up, and so I um. I borrowed one and demoed one and straight away I was like, yeah, this is this The is hype great. is real. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, the sort of other competition around that price point, things like the reissue 67s or the Chandler mm -hmm. Red, I guess, kind of thing. I haven't tried the Red. I've tried the reissue 67s. I, I just really liked it. I love mm -hmm. how it looks. It's yeah. very ostentatious. Yeah. Uh, sort of cream colored with the gold on it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, not super into like supporting a Russian company right now, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, they are a Russian American company, and I have spoken directly with the guys. They are nice people, and it's not their fault. But, uh, <laughs> you were saying that there was a specific quality to it that it, it eats up harshness. Yeah, you it's, it's it's quite smooth. It's quite um, it's not an overly bright microphone. It handles you know uh, sibilance and sort of the sort of ice picky things on a guitar really well. It just mm -hmm. kind of like smushes them back in a bit. Right. Um, but it's still got a very sort of like bold and immediate sound like you just speak into it and you just come comes back it just sounds like great it's a, it, it does so much work for me you know it's mm. like when i'm recording if it's just like a scratch demo vocal for a song, songwriting session it's like the vocal comes back sounding really good mm. and it's you know there's not a lot of work that has to get done to like sort of bang it into shape to make it sound convincing it's just like straight out the box a, a great sound and that's you know it makes my life easier um and where would we have heard it I mean, on on your stuff, is it are there particular records that we can hear it on? Uh no, I I got this late last year, and so there will be uh some stuff that I've recorded with it, but um mm. yeah, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, I believe one of the Coldplay albums got done with it. Um, I don't know where else you can hear it. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. Right. Well, speaking of hearing it, uh, we can't hear anything yet. You need some speakers, I think. Uh, yeah. Item number three. Yeah, it's number you out two. There. Number three. Number, number three. 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 Number yeah. three. I number three. Um, yeah, definitely some uh, some speakers. I, my current speakers are the um, Unity Audio Boulders, which are sort of quite large three ways. Yeah. They might be a little bit big and bassy for the space I'm in. Um, so I'm sort of toying with the idea of seeing what some smaller speakers sound like in the room. Um, are you talking about your current room or your yeah, imaginary room? Room. Well, my current room, oh, but, okay, you know, right, well, right, speakers, right. you know. Um, so you can move those walls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The imaginary, yeah. yeah, of course. But yeah. I mean, you kind of want to go with what you know and what makes, you know, speakers are a relatively personal choice. I think, yeah. you know, yeah. different yeah. people, everyone has. Quite... How many have you been through in your career? Like, because like, till you found the one. Not not that many, Um, you know, not in terms of what I've actually owned. I mean, I've heard yeah. loads because, you know, you go around different studios. Um, The... ATCs are very in vogue at the moment. Um, it took me a while to sort of get used to enjoying what they sound like going to different studios, but um, I don't know. I feel like if I'm doing this sort of dream studio thing, you kind of have to say like the big ATCs or something like that mm -hmm. just because you're... You okay. Um, and are we soffit mounting them? Are you going to soffit? Are you going to soffit mount? <laughs> no, if I only have one pair of speakers, I probably want something a little smaller than like big soffits because, okay. um, you know, I don't know, maybe like the... Uh, the fifties or something. Um, so we go uh, for ATCs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit silly to like, uh, pick something that I don't actually have a lot of firsthand experience. You've with. got forever to learn them though. It's fine. Well, yeah. You know, I kind of feel like it's a relatively safe bet <laughs> yeah. for a forever bit of speaker. I mean, 
I'd be happy to take my current speakers. You know, I wouldn't be complaining about that. But um, and how did you come to, to come to get them? Because again, they're not a. Well, I don't think we've ever had them on the podcast before. They're not a popular. Um, the, popular. the ATCs we've had. A, one, no, one. the the boulders. Oh, the boulders. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the um, I had the rocks for a long time, mm. which um were which are like the one the smaller one. Yeah. Um and one up from the pebble. I think there is actually. <laughs> Is there I a pebble? They, were, they, they, they have, have all sorts of <laughs> yeah rock themes. They're good at, yeah, they do. Their marketing yeah, department like, right now is like, oh, well, how do we have to stick to the rock thing? We're running out of sort of they love geology. It. No, I think it's great. Geology. Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the range? Let's go through the range. Uh, the range is. Oh, I'll get to this. So there's bo- there's the rock boulder. There's the rock boulder is the bigger one. There's um, got to, is there a pebble? I'd love it if there was a pebble. That's good. I think they used to have one called the pebble. I, they may they may have discontinued it. Um, oh, I love when a joke I'll come back real. to you on that. Yeah, okay. That's <laughs> um, good. Sorry, you were telling us how you, how you so came into yeah, it. Yeah, so you had the rocks. Uh, yeah, and that was sort of the um, the upgrade from that. I um, A friend was uh, parting with his pair, and, you know, I tried them out, and I really liked them. So, you know, um, and it was a um, convenient and attainable upgrade from yeah. from where I was. But, um, yeah, I mean, because I'm in a new space now, it's, it's a, when you hear – your speakers in a new space it takes you a while to kind of learn what's going on so maybe there's a little bit of just kind of like oh everything sounds different i need new speakers but it might just be a case of learning but you know yeah. i think it's always prudent to sort of uh at least know what the options are yeah so we're locking um, in the atc's the atc 50s right yeah that's the trendy answer yeah right? yeah okay that's cool. the active ones so um it was actually the mini rock uh, they okay. didn't go with the pebble in the end I although think, i think if i'm correct and I might not be. They had a thing called the Pebble and Bam Bam, which I think was like a small speaker and sub. That's or, right. Or like, yeah, which yeah, Flintstones yeah, did, related yeah. as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh, um, God. And the the stands are called the Monolith. Okay. Mm. Right. Anyway, um, pushing on then. You're, Although I will what? say, like, I, I don't want to take the mic here because they are doing exactly what I've always wanted in audio. I've said it on the podcast before. Actual names for stuff, not like yeah. X seven three seven seven P's or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when it's let's call them rocks, boulders, pebbles. You can remember that stuff. You can't yeah. remember the model number of these speakers. The I mean, the speakers yeah. that I picked, I can never remember if it's SCM or SMC. So yeah. you know. It's SCM, I can confirm. Uh, okay. SCM 50A right. Pro. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was, yeah. yeah. Item number four. Item number four. Um, what are we up to? Four. Um, uh, okay, I think I'd have to, and I'm going to tread carefully here so I don't uh, make that siren go off. Um, <laughs> Finger on the button, Will. Oh, something. I'm ready. I'm ready. Something ribbony and something to record in stereo, and since I'm pretty sure a pair of Cole 4038s is going to violate that mm-hmm. rule, I'm going to say a <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, AER88, which is Ooh. a stereo mic. Um, Finger is really okay, removed yeah, from the... Yeah, back to the keyboard. Yeah, I'm yeah. quite interested in trying these Steger mics that are made in Nashville um, that I keep hearing a lot about and hearing recordings of like just through their demos, and they sound really, really good just by that metric but i haven't heard in real life they make a stereo thing i think it's called the sr2n um i mean i haven't heard it so it seems a bit silly again to pick something i don't know but maybe that instead just yeah. because why not mm, this is interesting okay stager yeah s-t-a-g-e-r yeah. um the sr2n they look very uh, retro they're as like, well. They're they like the old RCA lofty. kind of mics, don't they? Yeah, I yeah. think they're sort of... Uh, I, th- I think he, the guy sort of... It's really his own designs. Uh, they're not mm. sort of like recreations of anything, but I think the lineage is definitely more to that sort of RCA sort of thing. Mm. But they sound... Uh, everything I've heard from recordings of them, again, I haven't had... The, no one stocks them and actually has stock in the UK. Right. I did... I was interested in getting a pair last year and uh, it was like going to have to be a custom order um, and I ended up getting some Bayer M... 160s instead but um so i haven't actually had a chance to hear them with my own ears but we, just... we can get that for you in the forever studio we just we've yeah. got the forever studio private jet we can yeah. just head yeah. over Bam. to like, I mean, nashville pick again like up. picking something that um i've not actually heard that might and my hate is you know seems dooming myself to a bit of chance but you know why not we're gonna do it yeah yeah of course all oh, right the original on of the course. podcast as well like it's always nice to have some new kit on there sr2n is that the one yes. sr2n yeah Stereo okay. something. Why are you specifically looking yeah. for a stereo ribbon? What's um, the idea there? Well, I guess conceptually here, I'm trying to sort of like get as much with as little as possible. So mm. um, I've now got the three microphones mm-hmm. um, and the ability to record stereo sources uh, that might come my way, um, mm-hmm. which is, I think, an important ability to have. Uh, and 
so yeah, I think it's a, and it's a good contrast, you know. Um, to and ribbon a, to contrast the the valve. The valve. Yeah, you know that makes can, sense. Can, yeah, a okay. condenser mic, is, you know, and a pair of ribbon mics is, I, I think, a pretty good complement if you have a mic locker with only two things in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's very tactical. This will very, very tactical. Very yeah. tactical. I like it. For someone who's doing this on the fly, I'm <laughs> I was going to say yes. this is very tactical for someone who did not prepare for this. <laughs> um, yeah, you're re remaining unstressed by it, which is good. Um, so, what's that item number five then? Now, uh, yeah, that I'm gonna. This is quite an opulent choice. Um, opulent is good. It's the Forever mm -hmm. Studio. We can upsell upsell dreams. Mm -hmm. um, a grand piano. Yeah. Um, and I am a total hack keyboard player. I, you know can sort of find my way around a piano a little bit but um they're just a great thing to have in the studio and i recently got a little piano for my own studio and it's a sort of small scale six octave upright sort of janky kind of like sort of brassy sounding thing is it three quarter size keys and stuff no no no, no, no it's, it's full size, size keys but it's just like uh whatever six by yeah. octaves is that many keys kind of thing so it's a bit smaller because you know yeah you've got to squeeze it into a small space and even though I, I'm not a great piano player, just like being able to sit down at that and the way it sort of like comes out of the instrument rather than out of the speakers, you know, there's a million yeah. like great piano yeah. BIs that arguably sound better than my janky little piano. Um, but this a way that that sort of fills the space that I find immediately more like sort of you get ideas going and, you know, mm. other, you know, working with other people that, you know, just, I think it's like the sound of music in the room as opposed yeah. to like coming out the speakers yeah it's a is, media it doesn't require like a setup and yeah and and even with my you know little thing that if, it has that effect and i was uh, at rack studios um a couple months ago for a session and um we we're doing some piano and they had the i think i've got a c3x in the studio we're in a big like a yamaha mm -hmm. grand piano and you know we had it tuned that morning and stuff like that and you just sit down you play the keys on a on a really good instrument like that that's been tuned and it's just like there's this sort of perfect harmony through the whole instrument and it's doesn't matter like, what you press it just sounds jazzy yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't it like you know yeah, like yeah, you yeah. just uh, yeah. yeah so and good. especially so, tuned as yeah, well. yeah 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 and, and so that you know uh that's something that would be pretty pretty nice to have in a dream studio is um that cause, you know there's just that's just a great experience and it's a great and even if you're not a great or even like passable keyboard player like i'm not just you put the sustain settle back down and like play all the black keys. You can <laughs> kind of you just the stuff just kind of comes out and uh, yeah, and presumably some people will be coming to the studio that can play the piano. So my so what's the actual model? You're gonna go for the same one? Are you gonna steal the rack one? Oh yeah, you could do. No, you I'm probably, gonna, I'm probably just gonna like go for broke here and say a Steinway Model D because like why wouldn't you okay. say that? All right, yeah. Um, Fair. The Fair. Yamaha is quite cool though. It's like um, a bit more sort of like uh, bright and. Uh, when you like lay into it, it sounds like Elton John. Like it's just like got this, you know. But I mean, the Steinway Model D is like that's, that's the one, isn't it? That's the. I think we've had this one before. It is it? the one, isn't it? Like two hundred thousand or something, or hundred. It's up there, isn't it? <laughs> if you need to ask Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Um, <laughs> right. Well, then we're closing. So, you've got your you've got your ground in there. We're closing in on the final item before we get to the any. Special finishes, yeah. Special on finishes. The Steinway Model Any D. signatures? Uh, how would it? Let's if I, you just upsell go, some dreams. Well, do you want upsell. To... upsell your dreams? Bearing in mind the vibe in the studio is of the utmost importance. Do mm -hmm. you want it to look a little bit different? Do you want it to be white, for instance? Do you want it to be black? Match that microphone like a... with gold <laughs> keys. Cream. Gold hardware. <laughs> gold. White with gold hardware. Yeah. Wow. No, I think I'd just go classic. Okay. I think a, the you know, it's a no. classic item. I think it should look classic. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Well, that didn't work. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Well, we tried. We, we tried, tried to upsell yeah. dreams. No <laughs> signatures on there. No, you can underneath. edit that out and uh, say leopard print. <laughs> oh, leopard print. Leopard. Yeah. <laughs> or, like... or just underneath. That would be quite yeah. nice, wouldn't it? As a reveal. Oh, just cheeky. when you lift the lid. Oh, Everybody goes, inside... oh, this is a nice classic piano. And underneath, leopard. No, just classic black and white. Classic. I think, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So last item then, we get to the, uh, the the final, before we get to a luxury item, we're going for the last studio item. Um, 
it's got to have to be a guitar because that's my primary I was, instrument. I was ga- getting panicky yeah. that you weren't choosing a guitar. Well, that's my primary instrument and it's the way that I'm able to mostly, you know, get ideas. So is this somewhere where we can upsell some dreams? I mean, must be able to, right? Uh, you want st- Who's your favourite? Who, who, you going to steal Dream um, Theatre's guitar or something? I don't know. What do you have, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing out of that. What? <laughs> <I'm> growing, <laughs> what is that as well? It's probably like an it's Ibanez or something, some, isn't it? It's got uh, a lot of strings. Yeah, it's got yeah, a lot of strings. Maybe some sort of silly signature model that probably doesn't have a headstock kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to upsell me on this because I think guitars like the the most expensive most whatever guitar it doesn't really mean a lot to me because i i don't know like guitars kind of have you kind of have to know it and it's got to feel yeah. good in your hand and mm. i probably take my strat like you know i mm. love that guitar um you know it feels comfortable it, you know it's it's a good one you know um we can't have that as a, a, a good strat. Come on. Okay, so tell us the story <laughs> of your strat. Then when did you get this strat? And um, what is it? Now it's awesome. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it is awesome. It is. Um, it was a very uh, generous gift to me for my 18th birthday from my parents, and mm-hmm. it is a. I have tried to date it a few times and come didn't up, work out though, did it? I don't know. <laughs> Australia's quite conservative. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, um I've come up with different results that have been like 88, 96, and 90-something. I, I don't know. I think it's an early 90s, right? It's okay. not like some sort of like crazy like 54 kind of whatever. Sure. Um, and I think it was uh, – the model was called like Highway 1. I don't think they make those anymore. It's it's American Strat. Mm-hmm. It's sort of surf green with this uh, – or not, not – I don't think it's surf green. It's kind of got this sort of like sparkly, very subtle sort of sparkly sort of – I like the sparkly. Um, finish to it but not like you know yeah glitter kind of thing Mm -hmm. um and it came it was bought from the local music shop where i grew up but that had so i think i'm the third owner of it it had been bought it had been owned before that by the guy that owned the music shop and had been his guitar that he'd gigged with for a while and before that he'd bought it from someone who had gone over to the states and i can't remember which city in the states it was um and he said that the guy walked into the shop and said i want the best strat you have and he bought this guitar so it was originally i believe bought in somewhere in america brought back to australia bought by the guy that owned this music shop and then nice now i have it and it's um i don't think it was like ever like a top of the line kind of thing it's not like a and have, you, have you done anything to it since then i haven't there's some small holes drilled into the face plate where someone had mounted like a midi pick up i think the original owner had like there's like tiny little pinhole things like yeah. that, that thing's not on it um i love the idea of going give me the best strat you have i'm gonna put midi on it yeah. <laughs> that's your first thought yeah. isn't it yeah uh, i want this to sound like a bassoon <laughs> yeah i mean that probably means it probably was a late 80s uh, guitar yeah, yeah yeah um yeah. but yeah no i haven't done anything to it um i took the back plate off and i it's been sitting off for years um so i, I wouldn't call that a mod i think i still think i still have it somewhere I don't know, for some reason the back plate's off it. Um, Messing with the springs, we you? No, I think I might I think it might have been I mean maybe it was. I don't know. I've had it for a long time. Okay. I, I don't remember when I took it off or, or why. Um the middle pickup is dead and has been dead for quite a few years and I've not had cause to replace it. I'll sell your Do you want to fix your middle pickup? <laughs> maybe. I guess. <laughs> maybe. It's not even I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've gone don't this want far for with... much, <laughs> no. you, Brendan. Uh, I've thought about the idea of putting new pickups in it and trying it, but I just, you know, I like the way it sounds. I guess I could always put the original pickups back. I've had it set up a few times. Um, mm-hmm. I still have the same strings on that guitar from late 2018, uh, and they still feel good. The last time I strung that guitar was when I was um, playing, was uh, was touring with Imogen Heap as her guitar player mm-hmm. in 2018. And partway through that tour, I restrung the guitar because I was like, well, that's what you do. You should, you know, restring your guitar. And I just haven't put new strings on it since, and it's fine. I used to break strings all and the no time. no middle pickup during that tour? No. I, it's, the middle pickup's annoying because you just kind of want to be able to, like, flip between the two. And I don't really have cause for that sort of, like, out-of-phase strat pickup sound. That sort of quacky thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be the guitar that I would have. If I had to have one guitar, I would feel pretty... Uh, sad if I just pulled something off the shelf from some custom shop thing and left that behind. Uh, yeah, it's got know. a lot of history in it yeah, for yeah. you personally as well. I mean, like, do you want to tell us about what was it like 
playing guitar with Imogen Heap on tour was. What was that? Oh, how, did, how did that come about? Was like I worked with uh, a wonderful producer called Guy Sixworth. Mm. Um, he mentioned at the start actually uh, as like his engineer mm. for that was kind of my first sort of like okay my career the wheels are starting to sort of turn a bit was was that gig mm. and um, he has a long history working with her um, and she wanted to do this tour and I was like really in the right place at the right time because she wanted him to come and do the tour with him because they had that band and oh yeah Fru Fru wasn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which I was a huge fan of yeah. when I was much younger so it was a little bit of a pinch me moment and then like um, yeah I was just kind of like well can you play guitar do you want to come along too kind of thing so yeah um, but yeah no, it, was, it was great it, that style of music not very guitar led at all that I don't think there's any real guitar in any of that music it's either sampled guitar or mm. chopped up sort of thing so it was quite uh a sort of exercise in either making the guitar sound not like a guitar or trying to make it sound like a sampled guitar mm. you know so the um, way you played it would have to be kind of different as yeah well. there's all sorts of silly things like running I, I got this you know line six helix board and i had it running out into ableton and then back in so that i you know had everything was like midi mapped and you know some songs were you know did you reattach the midi pickup no, <laughs> Shame. no but there, there'd be things that had like you know because everything was played along a timeline yeah. so there'd be like you know, pitch control running in real time that would be like modulating the effects in my, you know, like automate pitch automation able to mm -hmm. be modulating the effects in, in my helix or like, you know, there'd be like sort of like plugins that were sort of like doing sampling and reversing, you know, so you play one note to get eight notes out to try and emulate how it sounded on the record, that yeah. sort of thing. So it was like a lot of like lateral thinking. Um, I remember uh, calling the guys at line six a few times during the rehearsals like being like how do i get it to do this and they're like we've not had that question before most yeah. people just want to like make stevie ray one sounds like, <laughs> it was beyond like a, a sort of guitar job really it's not it wasn't like the regular like i played guitar until what people might think there was a, there's a lot of like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like almost technical director-ish of that kind of things uh I only only in sort of technically directing my own yeah. sort of like sounds i definitely you know the technical direction and the vision come from Imogen and yeah. Guy and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But there was uh, a lot of, again, like lateral thinking, like how am I going to do this because I can't just come out and just like noodle away sort of thing. So, um, which was cool. I mean, that's that that to me is really cool. It's like, you know, um, not like pushing the boundaries, but like something different, something, you know, it's a really different approach that sort of gets you thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, let's have a listen to this. This is this is what you've chosen, mm -hmm. and then we'll get onto your luxury item. So have a think while you listen to this luxury item, something that isn't studio gear, but something you want in the studio forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in a beachside studio in Lisbon, Portugal. With oh, I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take it back? No, we're with it. no, that sounds alright. I mean, okay. I'm not complaining. Okay, you're in a beachside studio in Lisbon, in Portugal. You have living room vibes, custom timber racks. Plants are plenty and loads of natural light. Your computer is an Apple Mac M1 Studio Ultra. Your interface is a Universal Audio Apollo X16. Your DAW is Pro Tools. And for your items, you have chosen for a studio desk, you've gone with the API 1608 with flying faders and 500 series included. For your microphone or one of your microphones, you've chosen the Soyuz 017 microphone. That's a valve mic. Your speakers are the ATC SCM 50A Pro. Then for your second mic, you've chosen a Steger SR2N stereo <laughs> ribbon from Nashville. You've chosen a Steinway Model D for piano. And finally, your very own Highway 1 Fender Strat from the early 90s. What Sounds do you about right. Yeah. yeah. Do you reckon yeah. you could do everything with that? have to wouldn't i <laughs> <laughs> there forever. You would. figure it out <laughs> i mean so, presumably i don't have to work at this point so i could just go to the beach and shit can just collect dust so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna use it well yeah so really, i'm gonna yeah. use it yeah um well on that note let's get to your luxury item for that room like what is there anything anything now that you you move from studio to studio like either you know something meaningful to you or just something ridiculous that you find yourself having uh, in the studio oh, no i actually know the answer to this okay one, um which is like a Bit of a silly answer, but Good. Uh, it is. It's a very specific couch. Okay. Uh, I think you can't uh, overestimate a good couch in the studio. Um, it is something called a Ling Rizé Togo, which is uh, 
probably to get the full like complement like nearly as expensive or more expensive than pretty much everything else on that list oh uh, my god i know the one so it looks a bit like yeah it's yeah. a very designery thing yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it looks a bit like a folded pillow yeah but um you see these things they're quite low to the ground as well mm. very soft 70s boudoir kind mm. of vibe to it mm. what yeah. color are you going to go with because they they come in all the colors they like the sort of they do like a burnt orangey kind of thing that is again mm. the very That's 70s the, vibe isn't it yeah, yeah. You kind of need one of those conversation pits that they used to have. To put in. <laughs> Do you know why they got rid of those? Because people kept stumbling into them drunk and injuring themselves. That's why conversation pits are not a thing anymore. I don't even that know what a conversation pit is. Because of that. Conversation, you know, there was that design aesthetic where you'd have, like, you'd walk around the edge of the room, but then in the middle would be, like, a place lowered, lowered down. Ah. You'd have think of these like, all around the edge. Think you're... of, like, Mad Men type apartments where they have those. Ah, oh, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. 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 So why specifically the uh, Ligne Rosé Ligne Rosé Togo? I think it looks cool and it's very comfortable and it's, you know... Uh, so do you have one now? Oh, no. No, no, no. no. Um, but I have sat in one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, mm. I, yeah. Well, I mean, you can, it's a first for the podcast. It is well. a first, it is yeah. A first, yeah. Furniture first. Yeah, furniture first. Incredible. What does everyone else say? We well, we've had... had 127 foot waterfalls. We've had uh, oh, right. Tango Ice Blast machines. We've had. <laughs> yeah. There was a biohacked sushi train. Yeah, that just was, delivered um... sushi straight from the sea into your studio. Do you want to reconsider? Are you happy with that? Uh, no, I'm happy with that. Yeah. It's a fine choice. Are you yeah. going to have a big one that fills up an entire wall as well? Like round a corner at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. a corner just... one is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Those, yeah. Those things cold. yeah. Perfect. They look very difficult to get up out of now I'm getting older. That's the only thing. <laughs> I think you just sort of roll out onto the into the conversation pit and yeah. then you sort of Drunk. scramble <laughs> yeah. into the okay. recovery position. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that is the end of the show. Essentially, yeah. we've got it. We've got it all lined up there. Um, how you know? You think you're going to be happy here in Lisbon? So. Yeah. 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 I don't know why I picked Lisbon, but yeah, that, was, <laughs> that, was re- that was really like a like on the spot kind of thing. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever been to Lisbon? Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. At least you've been. It's like it's not completely random. You know, no, no, it's no, nice no, no. There, So, yeah. Okay. Fine. Well. There we have it. Thank you so much, Brendan Cox, for joining us on the podcast. More than welcome. We really, really appreciate you joining us today. And it was a great, great getting to know your uh, forever studio choices. All right. So thank you pleasure. very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Well, another great episode. Some classic engineer choices in there. Musical, too. Musical choices. And I did enjoy the stereo ribbon as well. Yeah, I've yeah. Not, we've not had that before, have we? No, no. Very rare. Very rare. Maybe very rare. Very rare. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time for another adventure into Studio Foreverdom. Indeed. Goodbye. Bye-bye.